I need a way to switch signals between multiple input and output paths, and PCBWay sponsored this project, which is a relay switch matrix PCB. One use for this could be switching an input signal between multiple target devices in a functional test setup. Another could be to insert or remove devices from a signal chain. Using a relay matrix, we can bring one or all of these effects if we want in or out of the signal path at the push of a button. Since this PCB only contains relays and headers, it's designed to work in conjunction with previous PCBs like this 32-channel MCP2307 team-based relay driver. I'm controlling the relays over I2C just with an Arduino Uno, and since there's so many pins to connect between the boards, I found it convenient to use old IDE hard drive cables as jumper cables. Without going too deep into all the different matrix topologies, here's a basic cross-point matrix configuration where you have a bunch of rows and columns with a switch at each junction, so you can connect any X terminal to any Y terminal by closing the switch at the intersection of those, and you can even close multiple switches to connect multiple X and Y nodes together. But if you have a lot of X or Y terminals, you could end up needing a lot of relays. And this pull switched structure is the one I'm using. So if common is one of the X terminals, and all of these are the Y terminals that it could connect to, this structure uses both single pole switches and double pole switches where both of these have to close together and both of these close together and so on. So if both of the Y1 and Y2 paths are closed at the same time and you only want the X terminal to connect to one of them, you control that by which switch you close here to get X onto one bus or the other bus. And that limits what combinations of connecting X to Y that you can achieve. But if you only really care about one X to one Y at a time, you can practically cut the number of relays you need in half. For the way I'm planning to use this board, I'm considering the X's to be inputs and the Y's to be outputs. So I really only probably ever need to connect a given X to one Y at a time. So with this four-channel oscilloscope, that's just representing four independent devices that I want to send a test sine wave into, one at a time, so I can test, let's say, four audio amplifiers. So when I want to send the sine wave to this Y1 output, I would close the relay contacts at this junction here and complete that circuit. Then I would open those contacts and close the contacts here to connect X5 to Y2, and so on. This schematic has so many relay control signals and actual signals that we're switching on the X and Y terminals. It can be a bit confusing, so let's just keep it very simple. We have a total of 6x inputs and 6y outputs that we can switch between, so these are duplicated circuit blocks containing the relays. They are 5 volt coils, so we send 5 volts to the board here, and it goes into each of these relay circuit blocks and just gets permanently connected to one side of every relay coil. To activate a coil, we bring the appropriate other pin to ground through these driver inputs. So on each block, all of these signals here go to all of these header control inputs. Each relay block has five relays, so with six blocks, we have a total of 30 relays to switch six X inputs to six Y outputs. A specific X input is going to go to one specific circuit block here, and to send the X channel to whichever Y path we are selecting, we connect to the Y paths on this side of each block based on which relays are turned on. Not every Y output is used on every X path just because of the way I'm using this board. These relays are dual coil latching, so to close the contacts, we give a momentary control pulse to the set relay coil by bringing this pin to ground. And it only needs to be a couple of milliseconds according to the datasheet. Then the contacts will stay latched in that position until the other coil is 
turned on momentarily to reset, opening the contacts again. So with 30 relays, that's how we end up with 60 control signals to either set or reset each relay coil. Because I'm ultimately going to use this to switch audio signals, really X1 is right here, but I called it main N because that's where an audio signal is going to enter the whole matrix. And the Y1 output, I just called main out. So let's say our test sine wave is coming into this X path, and these are both the same pin. If I want to send this sine wave to a device under test connected on the Y3 path, I would have all of these other switches open. Then I would close these contacts, so because they are ganged in the relay, both Y3 and Y4 switches would be closed. So to get just Y3 connected to the sine wave, with this closed, I need to close this switch here to get the sine wave going that path. And for now, to keep it from getting to this unit, even though these contacts are closed, we would have this switch open. When it's time to go to Y4, these contacts are both still closed to complete a path, but now this one opens and this one closes, so we do not get a sine wave down to Y3. We do get a sine wave allowed over to Y4. To use the relay matrix to connect various guitar effects, effect units in and out of this signal path between guitar and amplifier. Here's the way it's actually connected. So say this cable here is a guitar plugging into the first effect input, then the output of that effect goes directly into the input of another effect, as many as there are, and finally it goes on to an amplifier. And normally you would turn these on or off as needed by just stepping on the switch here. But if you have a lot of effects, what you can do is have the relays do the switching. So you can have a whole new little custom set of switches that you step on and they control what's going on here. So bringing in the relay board would look something like this. The guitar signal goes into this X6 input in this example. So if I want to connect it to the input of this phase shifter, I activate the relay to close contacts here and connect the guitar over to the input of this effect. And the output of the effect comes over to here. Now we want it to go to the input of the next effect, so we would close the switch contacts right here, connecting it over to the input. Now the output of this one comes over to this input, and we want this to just go to the amplifier, so we would also close the relay contacts at this junction, getting this final effect output to the input of the amplifier. Now we have a lot of flexibility because if we want to be able to turn this off and bypass it, now the guitar would bypass this and just go to this input, which is Y5. So right here we would close this relay contact instead, and now the output of this just goes to the amplifier, so we keep this one as it is. And these other two here, we now open, so we're not connecting anything anymore. And we can just keep changing what we're doing here on these relay contacts to bring one or both or neither of these in circuit. And we can even alter the position of these. We can route it so that it goes to this one first, and then over to this one, then to the amplifier. So that's where the flexibility of this comes in very useful. So if you're in the middle of a performance and you need to quickly switch all of these off or on from where they currently are, you got to make time to step on this and this and this and possibly more, all while you're in the middle of playing something. Instead, you could just set it up to step on one switch and it does all that for you. To quickly demonstrate this, I have two effect pedals here, and I'm just going to use a sine wave as an audio source. And I have four push buttons here, so I can take both of these effects out of circuit and just hear the pure sine wave going straight to the amplifier. I can put it just through the phaser and hear that effect. I can put it just through the delay and hear that effect. Or I can put it through both of those effects and hear that.
We're only going to look very briefly at the sketch because this is covered in other videos I did on the MCP-23017, including the PCB that controls 32 relays. So after becoming familiar with that, since we're controlling 60 relays on this project, I have four of those GPIO expanders talking over I squared C. And I've gone and labeled each of these GPIO expander pins matching up with all of those control signal names on the schematic. In the setup, the first thing I do is just reset all of those relay coils so that all of the contacts are open because who knows what state it was last in, especially if it lost power while in the process of switching configurations. And by default, I'm configuring it so the main signal input goes straight to the main signal output, and then later in the sketch I can just bring in other pads. In this case, using those guitar effects, I have the four push buttons, and depending which one I press, I have functions here to go and route the signal through various relay combinations, so I can go with the sine wave test audio straight from in to out, basically bypassing, or I can send it to one guitar effect and then out, the other guitar effect and out, or both guitar effects in this order and out. And here's an example of just controlling the relays. To connect it straight from input to output, I have to enable a certain relay, so that would be X1 set A. I activate a coil, keep that signal there, which I set this for several milliseconds to make sure it's on. Then I turn off that same coil and wait a certain amount of time to guarantee it's off, and that gives the momentary pulse that we need, and the relay just latches the contacts in that position. This would be the X1A, so I'm closing this switch, and this is Y12, so I'm closing both of these switches together, and that means I'm connecting the X path straight over here to the exit path. Exit path is main out, and this X1 input is main in. So what I'm doing is taking my sine wave from the input using the relays to route it straight over to this main out. Now I'm going to need to continue this project with a more dedicated controller board and a way to hook up several foot switches similar to this setup so I can control all of these relay pads. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring the project and stay tuned for the next update to this overall project.